Hello everyone, today we're going to make a working sprint button which you can only unlock with a game pass in Roblox. Okay, so let's get straight into it. We're going to be making the sprint button from our previous tutorial, which you can find top right of the video now. So let's go into our starter GUI. We're going to add in a screen GUI. I'm just going to call it sprint GUI. And inside of here, we want to add in a image button. Now I'm going to make the size 0 0.10, 0 0.10 and then i'm going to manually resize it as this will remove any offset and make it good gui so it doesn't stretch on different devices now i'm going to place this on the side of my screen where i want the sprint button to be i'm going to rename this to sprint button and i'm going to add in a local script now on this actual gui here we're going to change the image in a bit when we make the game pass. So in this local script, we need to create a variable called sprint and we're going to set it to false by default. That'll basically mean we are not sprinting. Now we want to do script.parent.mouse button one click. So this will call a function whenever this button is clicked. So we need to do colon connect function like that and that will create the function and it will call it whenever the button is clicked. Then we need to say if sprint is false, then we're going to want to sprint. So to do that we need to say game.players.localplayer.character colon find first child humanoid dot walk speed equals 32. And this will increase the player's speed to 32. And then of course they'll be sprinting, so we need to set sprint to true. Now we're gonna create an else and we're gonna copy this code here, paste it in. But the default walk speed is 16, so I'm going to set it back to 16. This will be when they're not sprinting. And we're going to set sprint to false. And that's it. That is the actual sprint code. If we now test and play, you'll see we are walking. And then we start sprinting. And as you can see, it works. Okay, now we need to make the actual game pass. So to do that, we're going to head over to our Roblox project. And then where our project is, we're going to hit the badge here. And we are going to click on create pass. Now we're going to choose a file. Now you kind of want a file size of about 150 pixels by 150 pixels. That's what I've gone for. And I'm going to call this sprint. I'm going to call it sprint, sprint game pass. I'm going to preview it and verify upload. Okay, so what we're going to want to do is up in the URL on your game pass, you're going to see a little number here. We're going to copy that and we're going to go back into our project. Now that we've got this number, we need to, of course, make a game pass button. So I'm going to add in a text button in here, and I'm just going to call this. Well, I'm going to put in the text as sprint game pass, like so. I'm going to scale it. You can make it look as nice as you want. I'm just want a rough button, and I'm going to put it down here. Once again, I'm going to set the size to 0.1, 0, 0.10, and I can then resize it from here. This will set all the offsets to zero, which helps with stretch, um, with stretching on other devices. I'm just going to put it here for now. Now we're going to add in a local script, and I'm going to create a variable called ID, and I'm going to set it to this ID that we just copied. Now make sure this is your own ID and not mine, otherwise people will be buying my game pass and not yours. So yes, make sure that this is your ID. Now one more thing in here, what we want to do is go to settings on the game pass, click configure, and then go to sales and set item for sale to true. As this will allow people to actually buy your game pass. You can set as many Robux as you want on here. I'm just going to set one because it's only a tutorial. And now your item will actually be for sale. Okay, so the code we want to write now is what will prompt the game pass to the user. So when so we're going to say script.parent.mouse button one click colon connect function. Now this will of course call this function when the button is clicked. So we need to say game colon get service. This will be the marketplace service, which is where all the game passes are. Colon prompt and you'll see prompt purchase all of this we want prompt game pass purchase and in here we want game .players .local player. that is the player we're prompting it to and in here we simply want the badge id or the game pass ig id sorry just like so so now if we hit play you see we can hit the sprint game pass and it will prompt the badge for us so it will say something went wrong oh, okay i'm getting something went wrong because i copied the wrong id that is my fault um now it should work sorry i put in the wrong id because i am stupid 
Okay, now if we click screen, you already own this item, your account has not been charged. And there we go. Okay, now we're going to go under server script service and add in a script. And I'm going to rename this to game passes. And here is where we're going to deal with the actual game pass. So once again, we're going to need local ID. I mean, it doesn't even need to be local, it can just be ID. And we're going to need game doc, game colon get service, marketplace service again. And this time we're going to do colon prompt game pass purchase finish. Oh, sorry, this should be a dot here, not a colon. Colon connect function. Here we're going to need player. So we what we need to pass in here is the player, the game pass ID, and the per and was purchased. So whether or not it was purchased. So for that we'll just pass in player. Uh, we'll call it ID. Although we've already got a variable up here called ID, so we'll call this like ID B or something like that. Or I, yeah, just ID, um, ID G for ID Game Pass. And then comma purchased, like so. Now we need to do some checks to make sure the player has the Game Pass. So if purchased and ID G equals I, no, sorry, and ID equals ID G, then. So basically, if we have got the game pass, well, then we're going to need to make the button visible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this sprint button here and I'm going to make it visible. I'm going to turn that off. So now if we go to game passes, what we want to do is make the button visible. So player dot player GUI, as that is where the GUI will be stored. Colon, we're going to want to wait for child sprint GUI. And then we're going to need to wait for child again. Now these wait for childs just make sure that everything loads. Sprint button and dot visible equals true. Like so. Now we need to make the button visible again if the player joins the game in the future. So game dot players dot player added colon connect function player. This is quite a common um, function here. It will be used many, many times. If game colon get service marketplace service again colon user owns game pass async player.user id and then we also need to do comma and id here for our, of course our badge id then once again exact same thing as up here we do that perfect although i'm going to add in a wait for child player gui here just because sometimes it might take the player gui a little bit of time to load in but other than that there we go that is it now if we test this, we hit play, it should, yep, the button will be visible because we have the game pass already. However, if we made this a game pass we didn't already own, so I'm just going to find a random game pass. As I say, let's just find a random game pass and copy it. Here, this one will do, and copy that. And we paste that into our ID. Oh, it doesn't actually, uh, we want it in the game pass here, we place that into our ID. Then we test, we shouldn't have the button. And as you can see, we don't, can't sprint. We click this. Uh, you already own the item. That's because our game pass is... I, oh, yeah, I need to change the ID on the game pass as well, on the actual button. So now we hit play. We can hit the button. It'll ask us to buy it. This is a test. Your account will not be charged. Okay. Now the button won't actually... Oh, it will be visible. There we go. And we can run and turn it off and on. So that is it, everyone. That is all I wanted to show you. I'm going to set those IDs back now. That is how we can do that. Now, what we can actually do is on our sprint button here, we can change the image to be the image of our sprint button, like so. And then I can also set the transparency to one. And just like that, everyone, we've got our sprint button. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. So thanks for watching, and goodbye.